they wanna silence me, I'ma preach. I'ma preach that truth, I'ma preach. If they wanna threaten me, I'ma preach. I'ma preach that news, I'ma preach. If they wanna imprison me, I'ma preach. I'ma preach that word, I'ma preach. If they wanna kill me, I'ma preach. I'ma preach on Jesus, I'ma preach. Hey, this is Ricky Gantz with G220 Ministries and G220 Radio. This video here is going to be addressing some of the claims of the Hebrew Israelites about Gentiles. So here's what they teach, and then we're going to look at the scriptures. Well, it's Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. It says, and they assembled on the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. Their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, man. All right, you're an Israelite through your father, man, through the line of your father. You know what I'm saying? The man uh, let, puts a seed in a woman, all right? Then she pushes forth the life, all right? So it's, it's of the man because it came out of the man first, man. But you dummies out there, man, all right? So if your father, if, you, if your line doesn't go back to one of these tribes, all right, from, from a so-called Negro down to a so-called Mexican, if, you, if your father's line don't go back to that, you're not no Israelite, and you cannot be grafted in. It's, I say the truth in Hamashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Who are Israelites, man. All right, this is Paul speaking, man. My kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites, man. So when Paul was going to those other lands, to talk to the Gentiles, all right, he was talking to uh, the, the, the Israelites that didn't know they was Israelites, man. It's simple, man. All right, so one of the things that the Hebrew Israelites make a claim on is that Gentiles does not always refer to pagans or heathens that are not Jews. They'll say that this refers to sometimes, uh, when it's used in scriptures, it's referring to people who are basically born Jews, but they've lived in a pagan land, and so they've kind of assimilated that. Well, we, we know that the Samaritans were half Jews, half Gentile. We know that the Hellenists were Greek Jews. These were Greeks born Greek and converted to Judaism. So these were terms that were used to identify them. Now, Gentile is used to refer to those who are not born of the Jews. These were of the uncircumcised. <laughs> These are people who are not born from the Jewish line or the Jew uh, lineage, the lineage of Israel. So we're, we're going to look in the scriptures here because one of the things that uh, these guys do quite often is they love to proof text scriptures. Um, but we're going to kind of go through Galatians and look at what Galatians says here. You know, in Galatians chapter 1, you go down to verse 6, Paul's writing to the church in Galatia. And he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. You go down to verse 15 in the same chapter uh, of Galatia, Galatians. Uh, but when he who had set me apart before I was born, speaking of God who set him apart before he was born, and who called me by his grace, God calling him by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son, his son being Jesus Christ, to him, in order that I might preach him, Christ, among the Gentiles. So Paul is now saying, I've been called by the grace of God who set me apart before I was born to preach to the Gentiles. Let's go to chapter 2 in Galatians. And so we go here into chapter 2. We see uh, in verse 2, the second part of this, it says, The gospel that I proclaimed among the Gentiles in order to make sure I was not running and had not run in vain. So, so Paul has now been is preaching this gospel, this good news of Christ, to the Gentiles. 
And he says, but even Titus, Titus, who was a disciple of Paul, he was someone who Paul had converted to come to faith in Christ. Paul, but even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Titus was a Greek. He was a Greek who was heard the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and became a believer in Christ. You go down to verse 7, the second part of that, Paul says, I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised. Again, we're saying, you know, when we talk about Gentiles, we're talking about those who are uncircumcised, those who are not of the Jews. Okay, and that's how they were referred to. We know we, we look at uh, Samson, or I'm not Samson, excuse me, we look at David and Goliath, and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? So uncircumcised is another reference to those who are not of the lineage of Israel, or not of the lineage of, of the Jews. So he goes on in verse 8, uh, and we're just reading parts of this here, and you, you can go and read the context. You can just read the whole book of Galatians. Uh, it would be very beneficial to you. But it says, uh, For he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry to the circumcised worked also through me for mine to the Gentiles. Paul's saying, look, the Holy Spirit who worked through Peter through Peter uh, to the circumcised, also worked through me to the Gentiles. Uh, down in verse 9, it goes on and, and says, They gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me, that we should go to the Gentiles, and they to the circumcised. Then we go down to verse 12, and Paul says, for being when he's, he opposes Peter in this, this, this part of the scriptures, where it's, it's explaining that, where he, he goes and opposes Peter to his face, and he says, Peter, uh, before certain men came from James, and he was eating with the Gentiles. Uh, but then, of course, we know as he, uh, they came back to uh, the Jews there, and fearing the circumcision party, he pulled away. It says uh, down in verse 14, the second part of that, it says, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles then to live like Jews? So, I mean, it's pretty clear in Scripture, but we're just going to keep on going. We're just going to go through Galatians here uh, and, and look at what the Scriptures say. Verse 15. Now, Paul clarifies it right here. In this clip that we just listened to, okay, he said it's from the lineage, it's from your father. So even if you were to make the claim that Gentiles is referring to people who were born Jews, but they really... Um, have assimilated into these pagan nations and kind of began to live like Gentiles, not even knowing that they're really Jews. This is going to clear that up right here. Verse 15, we ourselves are Jews by birth, Paul says. He says, we ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Okay, by birth. We're not, we're not Gentile sinners. We're Jews by birth. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. So he goes on, right there is clearing it up for you. If, if you have some type of doubt, um, and, and um, ultimately we got to pray that the Lord will reveal the truth to you and open your eyes to see uh, your error, because it is by the grace of God. But... Here we're seeing that Paul's saying, look, we ourselves are Jews by birth. We're not Gentile sinners. So Paul is not interchanging this here, whereas, I'm, like I'm saying, they say that there's two different ways of viewing the word Gentile. It's not like Paul's writing this chapter, this whole, and, and there wasn't chapters and divisions and verses when, when this was a letter. Like if we was to sit down and write a letter, I wouldn't sit down and put little chapters and verses in there. But he's writing this letter, and he's going on saying, telling the Peter, you were eating with the Gentiles. And then he goes on and says in verse 14, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? In chapter 1, we're seeing that Paul's saying, I've been entrusted with this gospel to take it to the Gentiles. And so then he goes on, and he's saying, look, we're justified by faith here. We ourselves are Jews by birth, not Gentile sinners. So he's not flipping from one Gentile reference to the other Gentile reference. It's the same reference to the same people here. Um, Gentiles are those who are not Jews by birth. Let's go to chapter 3 in Galatians and see what uh, uh, what we have here. When we go down to 
Let's see, verse 8. It says, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. So again, he's continuing on this thought. It's one letter. It's one cohesive context here. He's writing this letter to the, to the, to the, the church in Galatia. And he says, And the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Go down to verse 14. So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Verse 16. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. Here's one of the things that they love to 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 try to hold on to as they say, well, it's to Israel. It's to Israel, this offspring. Well, Paul's making it clear here, it's not to offsprings, but to the offspring. And he's going to he's gonna explain it um, here. He says, now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one. And to your offspring, and he tells us who it is. Who is Christ? This promise that's made about the offspring is about Christ. It's about Christ, who is really the only true Israel. Um, and those who are in him are in Christ by faith, which we're going to go on in their joint heirs with him. Uh, we'll continue. This is all in the book of Galatians. Uh, that's why it's important to read context. When you're reading context, the understanding of how to understand Scripture is you read it and you read the immediate context before you try to branch out and pull something from here and something from there, other, another place in Scripture. Okay, you have to read the immediate context first to understand. It's just like when we say things. If I was to say, um, if I get to work and say, "Is is all the the workers here?" Now, if I was to say that in the context of it, we may say, "Yeah, all the people that are scheduled here today are here," but there are people that are off. So when I say, "Are all the people here at work?" Um, I'm referring to those that are scheduled to be here. I'm not referring to all the people that work at this place who may be off today or on vacation today. So you have to understand the immediate context. And, and that's the problem. We can't go and grab something from another part of Scripture to try to make it fit somewhere. We have to understand the context is where what we're doing, this immediate context. Then we get the overall view. Um, that's how you understand Scriptures and read Scriptures and try to understand the context or how you would interpret context. Uh, verse 26, it says, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God. Now he's writing to Galatia, to the church in Galatia, about the, these are Gentiles, writing to these Gentiles. He says, For you, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now he goes on and says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male or and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Okay, now this is in salvation right here. This is, this is what we're talking about. You're justified uh, by the faith in Christ. Uh, and he's going on explaining the law and the promise here in this portion of the scripture. It says, For those that are in Christ are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are in Christ, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Okay? Moving on to uh, chapter 5 of Galatia. No, yeah, let's go to chapter 5 of Galatia, Galatians. Um, verse 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. Uh, and now this is where I hope that you guys will understand and listen to this uh, because this is a lot of... Um, this is a clarification here because a lot of times they'll say, well, we are in the Spirit and we know of those who are in the Spirit because the Spirit testifies of who is in the Spirit and who is not. But I've heard things from these men. And look, now the works of the flesh are evident. 
You go down to verse 19. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But then this is the fruit of the Spirit, which is not evidenced in the, the, the teaching that these men do. Okay, But this, the fruit of the Spirit is this. It is love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Another scripture that was brought out here was from Romans chapter 9. And so let's look at that passage of scripture. It says, Romans chapter 9, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Paul's saying, look, my kinsman according to the flesh, he's 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 has this sorrow, this great sorrow for his brothers, his kinsmen according to the flesh. And he says in verse 4, they are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. Which they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, but real quick, verse 5 there, to them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. Jesus Christ is God, but that will be another uh, topic for another time and maybe another video. Uh, but verse 6 says, but it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all, because see, they stop there, for, it is, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. And not all are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said, About this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, for our forefather Isaac... Though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good nor bad, neither one of them was born, didn't do anything good or bad. It was for God's purpose in election, which we believe that in the Reformed uh, understanding of scriptures, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls. She was told, the older will serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means, Paul says. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, for I will, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or extortion, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have raised you up, that I might show my power in you, and that my, my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. Verse 19, you will say then, so Paul's about to answer their objections, because he's like, I know after hearing this, you're going to have some objections. Let me respond to those before you even bring them out, because I know what you're going to say. He says, you will say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Well, what does molded say to its molder? Why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much, much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory? Now listen here, verse 24, even us whom he has called not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. And then he goes on to quote Hosea, which I hear these guys quote Hosea quite a bit. But Paul is talking about, look, not, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. And then he equates this passage from Hosea to all people. 
that will come by faith to Christ. Not everybody's going to be saved. They love to say that we, we like to believe that or we teach that. That's not what the Reformed view believes. It's not what the Reformed view, te- Reformed view teaches. We don't believe everybody's going to be saved. We're not universalists. There will be people that will spend an eternity in hell, which is a doctrine, another doctrine which they deny. But he says, as indeed he says in Hosea, those who were not my people, I will call my people, and her who was not my beloved, or not beloved, I will call beloved. And in the very place... Where it is said to them, you are not my people, there they will they will call be called sons of the living God. As Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of, of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth fully and without delay. And Isaiah predicted, if the Lord of hosts had not left us offspring, we would have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. It says in the next uh, verse, verse 30. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it. That is a righteousness that is by faith. But that Israel who pursued the law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. But as if it were based on works, they have stumbled over the stumbling block as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So he's saying, look, what shall we say that, What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it? That is, a righteousness that is by faith? Yeah, they have, they have obtained this righteousness by faith in Christ. It says, but that Israel who pursued a law... They thought that the law was going to lead them to righteousness. Did not, they did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. So, the scriptures, I believe, are pretty clear. Um, and obviously, being a Reformed believer, I do believe that it is God who has to open up the eyes so that you can see that you would no longer be blind and walking in spiritual darkness, walking as dead man, dead bones that need to be revived, And I pray that uh, these men and others like them will come to know Jesus Christ and be saved and have their eyes open to the truth. That there is no longer Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female, but we are one in Christ Jesus.